Welcome back to Pilgrim Stories. The books that I have read you so far all take place right after the pilgrims arrived in the New World. But today I have a book for you that takes place about seven years after they arrived. So you will notice a difference. There's lots more houses and there's more food and things are going much better. Whoops, today's story is Sarah Morton's Day, A Day in the Life of a Pilgrim Girl by Kate Waters. Well, there we go. Good day. My name is Sarah Morton. My family sailed to America four years ago on a ship called the Anne. We came to seek freedom from the Church of England. First, my family settled in Holland, where I was born. Life in Holland was hard for us, so we set sail for the New World. My father died that first winter. This spring, mother married Goodman Kempton. I am learning to call him father and am trying hard to earn his love. Come thee with me. Let me show thee how my days are. This is my village. It is called Plymouth Plantation. At sunup, when the cockerel crows, I must get up and be about my chores. I put on my overgarments. Petticoat, stockings, garters, petticoat, petticoat, waistcoat, coif, apron, pocket, shoes, and roll my bedding into the corner. The fire is mine to tend. I throw brush on the red coals to make them dance. Mother and I make the hasty pudding. I lay the table with clean cloths, bowls, and spoons. I serve mother and my new father first. I must stand at my place to eat. Perchance my new father will make a stool for me. With the table scraps I've collected, I go out to feed the chickens. Because I have forgotten to latch the pen, I must run our hens a game of chase. At milking time, I find my best friend, Elizabeth Warren, at the pen. As we milk, we tell each other secrets. Today, I tell her of a dream about my real father. I miss him often, but I do not speak of him to anyone, save Elizabeth. I do not wish to seem ungrateful to my new father. Elizabeth likes to remember the time before she came to the, here to the New World. She tells me of shops in England full of colored ribbons and of fairs with women dancing. After milking, I muck the garden to make it rich for planting next spring. The muck is heavy and I must often stop to rest. Hurry along, Sarah, mother calls from the door. 
Oh, Mary, I'm caught idle again. I am to pound spices this day. Our house will have a pleasing scent. The thump, thump of mother's churning keeps me company. I wish I could tell mother about my dream, but she is quiet today. And I have often enough gotten the rod for speaking out of turn. Next, mother and I prepare the midday meal. When my new father comes home for dinner, he seems pleased with the rich pottage and warm Indian cornbread that we have made. After dinner, it's time for my favorite task. I draw vinegar to polish the brass. If I am patient and rub the salt and vinegar slowly, the kettle will truly shine. Of a sudden, I hear a warning shot from the meeting house on the hill. It means a ship has been sighted. Perchance we will have some visitors on tomorrow's tide. I pray that they won't be people who wish us harm. Mother says, I may fetch Elizabeth. We run to the top of the hill to see the ship, but it is a tiny speck at sea. I dare not wait to see more. It is time for my lessons. My new father thinks I show a talent for learning. I am grateful for in many families, girls are not spared from their chores for lessons. My fingers are clumsy around the chalk, but it gets easier. Someday I may be able to read mother the letters she gets from her relations in England. After the lesson, Elizabeth is waiting for me. I show her my new father's gift. He has made me a knicker box. Elizabeth and I take turns shooting. We keep score with scratches in the sand. Today, my marbles go through the arches more truly. Hers bounce back to her. I am winning, but the sun is beginning to lower, and I must get back to my chores. I feed the fire to heat the pottage again and milk the goats once more. The big brown goat is troublesome. The more I push, the more she kicks. I will have a mark to show from her tomorrow. As I return from milking, my new father is coming home. He has news of the ship. It carries visitors to our village. There is much talk about where to lodge them and how to portion out the stores. After we have eaten, my new father quizzes me on my verses. I have been learning this one by heart since last Sabbath. It has words to turn my tongue into a knot. Psalm 100. 
a psalm for confession. Shout ye triumphantly to Jehovah all the earth. Serve ye Jehovah with gladness. Come before him with singing joy. Know ye that Jehovah, he is God. He made us and not we his people and sheep of his pasture. Enter ye his gates with confession, his courts with praise. Confess ye to him, bless his name. For Jehovah is good, his mercy is forever, and his faith unto generation and generation. This evening, Father is pleased with my learning. He hugs me with pride. Perchance, he does like having a daughter. Mother calls for me. We set off for the spring to fetch water for tomorrow. We look out to sea and see the ship. Perchance mother will have letters and a bolt of new cloth tomorrow. Now there is time for quiet conversing. Mother speaks first. She asks how I am liking my new father. I can truthfully say that I am becoming fond of him. It has been many months since I have seen mother seem so glad. The air gets chill as we fill our buckets. It is getting towards sundown. The village quiets as we turn homeward. Father and mother talk in the candlelight. I bid them good night. I get my bedding ready and put my overgarments in the chest. Though I am almost grown, I tell the day's events to my poppet. I tell her about the ship in the harbor, winning knickers from Elizabeth and my dream. And best of all, I tell her of my new father's pride in my learning. It's been a fine day. I say my prayers and thank God for his bounty. Fare thee well. God be with thee.